All right, man, welcome everybody to our Builders Call. Thanks for being on here with me. So uh, one of the players on our team, well, <laughs> two years ago I had a, one of our agents, really good guy, man. Um, he was here in Ohio, Jack. And uh, he was, we started, I think it was 2018, we, we game plan together, just kind of like now. And uh, he, he did a little bit, but he was really committed to, to really coming out the gate, making changes in what he was doing, his lead flow. He, we were game planning all the right things, you know, like um, his set schedule set up, his wife was behind him, and um, he made a commitment to lead flow and then to the work. So it's like what I've been counseling all you guys when you do our game plan meetings, putting that, putting that together. And then we embarked on this new change and he was, he started kicking butt, like seriously. He started, before he might do maybe five, six, 7,000 a month, he started on a regular basis popping over 10,000, you know, in February, March, and then April, you know, hitting 15,000. He was on a roll implementing the game plan. And I mean, that's what's amazing is that when you decide to make a change and then you talk to me and we plan it together, hold you accountable, you know, you put the schedule, the lead flow, budget, and then the execution of it. It's just amazing what happens, right? Just amazing what happens. And he was on this roll. Then he started getting dizzy um, vertigo. He was suffering vertigo. And this is like maybe towards the beginning of the summer of 2018, experiencing just vertigo. He had to, you know, step back. Then this is when we're going into homes. We weren't doing telemarketing or telesales, okay? And then um, later we found out because his son's a neurologist, a doctor um, who's helping him out. They finally diagnosed it as some rare disease. And it's something that progressed very quickly. It, it started acting like Alzheimer's. You lose your motor functions, your brain still working, but you lose your motor functions. And then pretty soon, soon you lose your mental faculties. It starts acting like Alzheimer's. And um, so as he was going downhill, I went up to visit him. He's, he was up in Cleveland. And um, I caught him. He couldn't hardly speak. But I caught him when he remembers me. And uh, this was the last time I saw him because he died about three weeks later. And um, there's a really, like some of y'all may have remembered. His name's Jack Hassett. Uh, some of y'all that had been with us that, that time ago. It was really devastating. You know, it was, for me in 2018, it was, uh, it, it made me think about just how quickly it can take you out. Life can take you out, uh, you know, and you know, he's Catholic like myself. So I went up to his funeral and, you know, a believer. And uh, uh, very profound. And uh, it was, you know, it makes you think about, we don't know. I mean, we always say that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen six months from now. So then, <laughs> so December of the same year, that's when Jenny was diagnosed with breast cancer. So going through all that in 2019, and then uh, here we are um, last year in 2020, you know, bringing on a bunch of new agents and stuff. And then one of those agents we brought on is suffering. I think it might be similar. It's the same family of um, issues, I believe. So um, I hope it's not. I hope it's not the same thing. Um, but anyway, he's kind of um, freaking out, as you can imagine. So I will ask you to pray for him. I'm not going to name his name. I'm going to ask you to pray for him, and um, that. But he's. Uh, it can be bad. Let me just say that it can be 
that. It's like a wide range of things. And um, so I've been a little, you know, I was in church praying for him today. So I was a little bit melancholy. Um, I get that way about people that, uh, you know, anyway, you know, it just makes me think like, gosh, you know, so I, I always, um, you know, I contemplate what his uh, family's going through, what he's going through, kind of the fear that naturally, you know, like if you got diagnosed with something where your lifespan could be this short or it can go this many years, but you don't know which one it is, which one are you going to naturally think about? You know, the, the six month window or the, you know, 10 year, 15, 20 year window, right? And in fact, what I did was I uh, just emailed this morning. Um, Jack's son is a neurologist, so he knows all about this stuff. So I, you know, I emailed him the name of this particular um, diagnosis and, and wanted to confirm with him if it was the same thing that Jack had. Nonetheless, it makes you think, right? It makes you think about how we take, you know, life for granted, how we take time for granted. You know, the fallacy is, oh, we got all this time. And um, every time I think about that, it, it motivates me. It really does motivate me to uh, um, get off my rusty dusty <laughs> and, uh, you know, get serious. Get serious about what it is I'm doing, um, what it is I'm trying to accomplish, and, you know, the twilight of, you know, in the fourth quarter of my life. <laughs> I talked to a, an AG yesterday. You know, he had 60, and he says the last third of his life. <laughs> and I never heard it that way, you know, because he's expecting to go to 90. And I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. You know, instead of hitting 60 and thinking it's the last quarter of your life, and, you know, you automatically think your lifespan is, uh, you know, shorter. Like, what, 80? <laughs> So I, I, I like the last third of my life. <laughs> I think, you know, some of our guaranteed universal life, you can pick 90, and I think it's only 3% um, ever make it past 90. So that's why when you do a guaranteed universal life, um, you can peg it at 90 and feel pretty comfortable the person's not going to live past 90. You got 97% chance, right? Um, so... Uh, so I like the third <laughs> of the last third of my life. So, you know, why do I mention all that? Well, for the obvious reason, right? Um, the obvious reason, uh, you and me never know, you never know. It's like those songs, all those songs, there's so many songs on live like you're dying. There's actually a country song, I think, right? live like you're dying and uh you know the urgency i guess it's a uh, more of a uh talk about urgency of living your life to the full while you still have a life when you wake up every morning and you can stare up at the ceiling and go thank you lord for giving me one more day and then valuing the day that you have with important valuable work to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish in your life without being fearful. And it's amazing what fear can do to hold you back from all the possibilities that your life can become. And, uh, and so maybe that is the, the key thing, living your life to the full without cowering, cowering in fear, right? That, look, man, if, if my heart's right, my soul's right, and, you know, I am, you know, su um, submitting myself to God and his infinite wisdom and mercy, um, then I'm chasing the prize up there, not down here. So whatever I do down here is just uh, frosting on the cake of up there, you know, I'm building my mansion up there. So why, why let fear hold me back from anything, right? What, what is comfort zone, except for the ability to limit yourself from being everything you can be? You know, the comfort zone keeps us stale, keeps us 
um, at the same place in our lives that um, that we're familiar with that that will keep us in a status quo getting out of your comfort zone is to me the definition of achieving um, to become greater than you are right so <laughs> So this book, First Year in Network Marketing, Your First Year in Network Marketing, is a great reminder book for those of us that have been multi-level. You know, although our business is not a multi-level marketing program because we don't market by sponsoring people into our business. In other words, you know, multi-level in insurance would mean that I bring an agent on board my team so I can get into his warm market to sell life insurance. Okay, that's more of the MLM mentality. That's the marketing part of multi-level is you sponsor people so that you can get into their warm market. Okay, well, to move product, okay, to move product. Um, we're a little bit different than that because we hire agents to run our lead program. So our marketing is our lead program. Okay, but we build our agencies by hiring agents and then hopefully get into their warm market to bring other agents in for them and then avail themselves to all the other recruiting tools that we have um, outside of their war market. So this is why this book is important because it talks about that whole idea of networking person to person and, you know, finding people. This, you know, doesn't really um, uh, anyway. But one of the first chapters is that idea of preparing your um, agents, preparing your people that you bring on for the rejection part of the business. You know, this, you gotta get this book, because this is just a great primer on, um, on the business of building what it is we're doing, right? So, you know, getting back to that idea of um, fear and rejection, you know, um, it, it goes both in selling and recruiting having that idea getting into that idea of what do you have to lose <laughs> like really what do you have to lose if you constantly focus on your fear of what you have to lose you will never gain anything more than you have because you're so focused on what you have to lose that um, you start losing that thing that you don't want to right is that kind of weird right you know instead of reaching out for the thing that you need the thing that you want thing gets you out of your comfort zone so a good checkup from the neck up is this question are you comfortable no i mean are you comfortable because the way to answer that question is what are you doing every day that's not comfortable what are you doing every day that um that you're pushing beyond your fears and doubts you know um like, as an example, uh, I've been coaching people on, you know, put together a schedule, let me know what your schedule is, and then we're going to talk about budgeting for leads. Uh, and, you know, I have not really had anyone send me their schedule or send me their budget for leads where they commit to a weekly, you know, this is on the sales side, you know. And it's like, Holly, what, what's up, man? Um, is it because they are out of their comfort zone? Well, yeah, I'm pushing you to be accountable, you know? And I think sometimes I have to, maybe I need to act more like a boss, but I don't want to act like a boss. You know, I want to treat you like adults that you have a, a, a need and desire to want to grow a business, want to sell insurance, then you need to do the things that you need to do. I'm, this year I'm becoming more focus on simplifying the process for you, simplifying what you need to do to make a lot of money, okay? You know, my friend, uh, my agent buddy, come on, focus for me, please. Man, he may not be around three months from now. Like the stuff I'm telling you now, He's getting more testing done. Um, he may not have the opportunity to implement anything I'm telling you guys right now. 
even if you were on this call. Right now he's thinking, am I going to be alive six months from now? Like, can you imagine? Like, I'm teaching you stuff to implement so over the next three to five years you can make a million dollars a year. And he's worried about being alive six months from now. Like, think, think, take, think about that for a minute. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to be melancholy, but I really want to wake myself up and wake you up at the same time. What we're doing, taking what we are doing, taking our t life for granted. And uh, man, it's got to stop, right? It's got to stop. You know, why are you living in fear the way you are? Why am I living in fear the way I am? Why am I not getting out, more getting out of my comfort zone? Why am I not pushing you to get out of your comfort zone? And I'll, the only reason why I can think that is just I don't care enough about you. I'm more selfish. I'm more selfish because I'm worried about more about my comfort zone than your comfort zone. You know, maybe I don't push you because I'm scared that you're going to quit. You know, maybe I don't challenge you because I want to be liked. I want to be the manager everyone likes. You know, I, you know, I preserve, I want to preserve our relationship at the same time. It's kind of like watching you suffer the mediocrity of your existence in a comfort zone that will forever keep you down. Like, brokenness is a mindset. It is not a state. See, because when you change the broken mindset, you change your state of brokenness, of broke. You know? Does that make sense? When you change broke up here, you change broke down here in your bank account. So, I'm meandering, I know. I still go back to the idea that, gosh, the stuff I'm teaching you, some people just may not have the opportunity to ever implement it for their families. And for well, Alex, they shouldn't be concerned about building a business. No, they shouldn't be. They really shouldn't be because they need to be concerned about their health and if they're gonna die in six months. So, do you all on this call have a diagnosis of possibly dying in six months? Possibly. I mean, I look on this call, I look at the participants on this call, I, I can feel I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get going, man. Um, you know, it's worthy though. It's worthy to talk about this stuff. Annette, I got Annette on here, Bruce. I got Dave, Harriet, Jen, Joy, Karen, Ken, Michael, Rick, Todd, Tiffany. As far as I know, y'all had not been diagnosed with some um, illness that could take you out in six months. As far as I know, I could be wrong, but the person that we're trying to pray for is not on this call, right? So I know y'all got stuff. I know y'all got stuff. You can tell me your list of problems that's a mile long. You know, probably one of those is the limitations of, you know, the pandemic, right? Your judgment and your belief about the pandemic and your reaction to that judgment and belief. Um, you know, like, <laughs> anyway, so, the simplicity of <laughs> getting back to why I opened up my thing. Um, so let's just break it down. Like unemotionally, this is the unemotional game plan for anybody who wants to really operate this business. Okay. Fear, no fear, whatever. I mean, this is it. You need a definite schedule that you can control. Okay. right? You need a commitment to dial, right? To produce 
results from which you can be coached. Okay, so I can coach results. I can't coach theory of results. I can't coach, well, if I do this, and I do this, and I make this many calls, and I make this many, and if I do this many leads, and if I do this, blah, 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 what kind of results, Alex, will I get? <laughs> I could tell, I could preach theory all day wrong, long, okay? It's like, that doesn't help me, that doesn't help you. What helps me is you tell me your schedule, and then you tell me a commitment to dial, and then from the dials, you need leads, right which is a budget for leads okay well i said don't have a lot of money for leads great let's get you free old leads but alex i don't want to dial like 500 times to book three appointments <laughs> okay so now you're telling me what you don't want to do i'm telling you what you need to do if you don't have money and you're telling me what you don't want to do it's like, how's that going to help you? How's that going to help you? you? You give me input and I give you my thoughts of 22 years in this business and another seven years in network marketing, then my years and years as a consultant and in the Air Force as a um, certified project manager, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is simple, man. What is your schedule to dial the phone, to execute? Lease and budget. Do we got that? Are you making a commitment to that? Which means a commitment to dialing the phone to create results. You can do this for recruiting. Schedule, dials, leads, our Facebook lead program. I'm getting, I'm getting results, man, with that. I think that kind of it's per lead is down to, I don't know what I did. I still don't know what I did to get the lead cost down to like under $9. I think right now it's running at about four or five bucks per lead on my Facebook recruiting, which, you know, last end of last year is running about nine, 10 bucks. So I have no idea what I did. I changed my ads a little bit. If you've been on Facebook, you might've seen my ad. I've got Grant Cardone as one of my ads, which seems to be producing, I don't know that it's producing as many life insurance agents, but it's producing way more leads, you know. Um, but anyway, this this simplicity of it. But Alex, pandemic, does this have anything to do with pandemic? No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's talk about a pandemic schedule, which means you don't want to go into people's homes. Awesome. Don't go into people's homes, right? Do you have a schedule to dial leads? Yeah. Are you committed to making dials? Yeah. Okay. In order to make dials, you need leads and a budget. So tell me how many leads are you doing? How many leads are you ordering? How many free leads are you using? I mean, the fact that there's a pandemic has nothing to do with your result. But Alex, I can't go into people's homes. I didn't say go into people's homes. You're gonna need more leads because the, clo the show rates and closing rates are lower when you're doing telesales. Well, are you telling me to go into people's homes? Did I say that? Are you listening? I said, don't go into people's homes but you're gonna need more leads to produce the same results you were producing before. Any questions? <laughs> so pandemic schedule is you got more time to be on the phone. You don't have to go to people's homes anymore. So I would say that you got more time to put in the business so with all that time, then what are you doing? Because your results aren't like they were before. Well, all I can surmise is that it's a lead issue, it's a dial issue, but it's certainly not a schedule issue because you could be on the phone all day long, 
but you don't got enough leads, you're not making enough dials. I mean, the results, is this simple? Am I like, I mean, honestly, if, does everyone understand this? Because if you don't, it's like, gosh, we need to do remedial training then. Okay, does this make sense? I know, I'm, I'm getting a sarcastic edge to me because I just like, someone's dying. He could be dead in six months. And I am in pain thinking that some of y'all are taking your next six months for granted that he won't have. He's worrying about staying alive and you're worrying about, well, I don't have enough money for leads. I can't control my environment because kids are screaming all the time. And I just can't say no when they want, you know, grandma to watch the kids. When you're dialing the phone, they don't respect you, that you're a business person trying to provide for your family. They take advantage of you because they're making you a $10 an hour babysitter and when you accept that babysitting job, you're valuing your time at $10 an hour. I'm going, oh my God, seriously? Oh my God. When your hourly rate really ought to be 500 bucks an hour. But when you diminish your time to doing $10 an hour work, you're no better than a $10 an hour high school student doing a babysitting job. Oh man, you know what? I am just sick because someone's dying right now. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I apologize. Just bothers me, it bothers me that someone's dying, doesn't have any more, may not have, okay, I'm, I'm praying for him, but he may not have any more time on this earth. And, um, I just want to shake me up and shake you up that, um, man, God. Now let's pray for him right now. I don't know if y'all are believers. If you're not, I don't care. This lips I'll pray. Lord, please, please help him. Please let his heart be right with you, O oh Lord. You may not take away his illness. You may not heal him. But please get his heart right with you. Get his family's heart right with you. But if there's one little iota of mercy in your heart, Lord, please grant him the healing that we pray for. You just pray for his healing, Lord. But according to your will and purpose, you may want him with you. You may want him within. Who are we to want to take him away from you? He's your child and you love him. We know you love him. We know that he believes in you. He believes in your son, Jesus. He cares about his family. He's hurting right now, Lord. Please give him strength to bear the cross that you've laid upon him. Please help us, Lord, realize that every day is a gift from you. And that we will pray for him unselfishly, O oh Lord. That you may lift him up and lift his family up. We do beg, Lord, for his healing, that you may heal him. So he may still do your work here on earth. But Lord, if you must take him away, please give his family the strength to continue on. And give us the strength and your merciful love to continue on ourselves, to do the work that you have for us, to not be living in fear that Satan may put us in this cloud of fear, that he may clear the fear away from our hearts so we may get out of our comfort zones, that we may go out and fulfill your purpose in our lives, Lord. And this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, man. Please know that um, we're in a serious battle against principalities and powers, and that 
this little old insurance business can do great things in your life and the lives of your clients and the lives of your agents that you hire and that you bring on board. Okay. And at the last third of my life, I want to make that impact. Last third of my life, I want to make a serious impact. Um, Andy Albright said, I'm starting to get an edge to me. Kind of the edge I had when I started this business. And um, I, I don't know. I think it's a different kind of edge. But it's an edge nonetheless. And I think I'm going to capitalize on that to, you know, make my life more meaningful and hopefully make your lives more meaningful. Um, maybe I need to push you more. I need to challenge you more. I need to get you out of your comfort zone more. I need to do so much more for you that I have not been doing. And I'm going to ask you harder questions. I'm going to ask you harder basic questions. So tell me, dude, what's your schedule? Tell me what is your lead investment? Okay. I've worked hard at putting this um, Facebook program together for myself. Now it's time for you to step up. If you want to participate in it, let me know. I can get you hooked up, man. I can get you, you people schedule, will book your calendar and they'll be on there. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do the money. I think maybe it's going to be, a, you know, how much per week that you want to max, you know, your max budget per week. It's going to be something like that, or it's going to be a per interview. I'm not sure exactly, but I want to know that you're wanting to recruit people. Now, Presence Club, you're part of Presence Club. You can get ZipRecruiter. They're going to give you, I don't know, 10 ZipRecruiter um, resumes. You know, nothing big, but a little bit of something. There's also the QRA program. You know, there's a lot of things you can do through the Alliance as far as sourcing candidates. But I think I've got the best program that's even performing better than the Alliance's Facebook recruiting program. <laughs> All right, dude, take care, Dave. So let's, um, let's do something. Let's make an impact, man. Get out your comfort zone, ask you hard questions. Look in the mirror, look at the man or woman in the mirror and say, what do you want? What do you really want? Are you willing to go after it? Because you only have so much time on this earth to make it happen. You might live till 90. But if you live every day like you're going to die in six months and you've got to get some work done, I think you're going to live your life more to the full. And do you think someone who has six months to live gives a squat about getting out of their comfort zone? I don't think so, right? I'm getting out of my comfort zone more. Okay. So anyway, all right, that's it. A different kind of builder's call, but um, there's a point at which you got to strip away the political correctness and you got to strip away all the more, the mores of the society to, you know, do the thing that generally people look down on and I don't care. <laughs> you know me. Um, so like, God bless you guys. I'll pray for all of you. Pray for all of you. So anyway, gang, I love you. I love you all. I want you to grow. I know that in my heart, it's you can make such an impact in this world. The things that you do in this business makes an impact in this world. I want you to know it and realize it and take advantage of this tremendous opportunity to make your life ripple. Because right now, a lot of you are hiding the light under a bushel basket. And you're not taking that bushel basket and letting that light shine. And I want you to let that light shine. So, man, don't let fear, don't let Satan, don't let the enemy put that bushel basket over your candle, over your light. See, darkness cannot overcome light. Light overcomes darkness by the mere burning of that light. You already have the light in you, okay? You already have the light in you. You just have to take that bushel basket off and shine that light before all, and you will make an impact that goes way beyond money. I'm not talking about money here, man. I'm talking about letting your life impact your life ripple among others, right? So man, God bless y'all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine down upon you. May he lift you up when you are down. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Rock on, man. God bless. Let's do this thing.